She has something to say today because I know you've got some questions and we're going to go through those. But as you know, because I mentioned to you, she's been waking me up, you know, every third or fourth night at one, two o'clock in the morning with something to say to you. And I don't actually know what that is because I just see her in my sleepy 2 a.m. vision and then that's about it. We don't kind of go very far. Now, I have a feeling that this is about running and you have a question. Oh, she's bored now. She's gone. She's like, thanks very yeah. much. I'm a star. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> she's just looking for food. She's always looking for food. Give me yeah. more food. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's a working dog, hey. Um, yeah. One of the questions that you have was, does she like running on lead with you in the mornings? And I want to answer mm. that by saying this, is the Pope a Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> that's not from her, but that's just kind of, that's like, ah, oh, it's really? Is that a question? Um, I want to <laughs> I just want to check in with her and ask her why she was waking me up. Okay, this is about running and this is about your running style. See, people out there, our animals know stuff. They talk about us in a way that we don't really expect. Do you have lower back problems, hip problems, something going on that you would be dropping in the hip or dragging your left foot or doing something with your running? Yeah, about uh, 18 months ago, I had a really bad stress fracture in my left femur, actually. And um, since having to, you know, heal it, and, you know, I've been given the all clear to run again, but I'm a lot slower, which I actually think this is you're onto something because I go a lot slower than I used to because I just don't want to do this, you know, I don't want to inflame it again or have any. Um, I don't want to stop running again. So I've just modified how I run a little bit, and it is my left side. And I probably just, my pace, she pulls me. So I'm running along and I'm being yanked along by her. And the reason I asked if she enjoys that is because I know she's much more used to running at a faster pace and she's off lead more often than she's on lead. So because we go to the park more often than not, um, the only time she's really on lead is to run with me. So I was curious as to whether she liked this new pace that it's funny you pick that up because that's that I know exactly what it is I'm slower and I think sometimes she gets really annoyed with me because she's not going as fast as as she's used to very yeah. interesting yeah well let, let's just follow that um path a little bit because she's got more to say about that um just just from your point of view um even resting a little bit longer would probably be worthwhile uh, for your own healing and recovery she is a speed demon. She just, there's like two paces, fast and faster. There's just no, <laughs> we don't like stopping. And that's going to come into our next question about having a small backyard. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, she, she's a working dog. She just wants to run, run, run. And she's three years old, so she's just bursting with energy. With the running slower, there is there is a change of gait as well. And I really see you collapsing down on that left side. It's like the left strike is heavier so we've got this kind of mm. lifting dropping thing going on uh, which will create some imbalances for yourself and that's what she sort of wants to tell you so there's kind of two parts to this from her is one that yes she likes running faster there is no doubt about that uh, you could never run fast enough for her so you know there's that's just whatever that's, she's mm. got to do whatever she's doing on a lead. If she's out in a paddock somewhere, she can have free reign. But, and she's okay with that because, as you know, she absolutely adores you to bits. <laughs> uh, she, she can't get enough of you. Like she's like, oh, where's mum, where's mum, where's mum, where's mum? And <gasps> I don't oh. think she struggles with anxiety at the moment. But if this kind of adoration society thing gets out of control, she may struggle with a little bit of separation anxiety. I actually just recently had a guy come out that's a bit of a dog whisperer to just tame the, the barking a little bit because she'd done a couple of things like um, the, the barking was getting a little excessive. She was barking at noises and being a good guard dog, but it was getting a bit excessive. But I know, and I know you will not think I'm weird to say this, but I know she understands me. So when in, in the mornings when I have to go to work, I'm like, I tell her, I'm like, hi, baby, up you get, give you a scratch behind your ear. I'm going to go to work. 
I'm going to be home later. We're going to go to the park. Um, I'll take you for a big run. I love you. I'll see you later. And I literally say that to her every morning that I go to work and then I come home and she's so excited. She runs around and then she knows she gets straight in the car if I'm taking her to the beach or somewhere or she gets the lead on and we walk to the park. And, yeah, she totally knows what's happening. She's got her routine. Yeah. Um, that routine fits in with me and she knows that I'm not here sometimes. So I feel like she gets it and I feel like it, as long as I tell her and as you know, I've used your services before when she was sick and I was away overseas and I needed to know that she was okay. Um, yeah, I didn't tell her that I was leaving. So she was so worried about where I was. I hadn't come home and, you know, I'd said to her, I'll be back, you know, like I normally do, but she didn't know I was going for a long time. So she got yeah a bit scared so now I just make sure I tell her every time yeah. I'm going somewhere even if it's just up to the shop I say I say what I'm doing I say I'm going to the shop I'm going to be 10 minutes I know she might not know time but um, I'll be back soon and I say I'll be back soon and she knows that that means just a little while and then I'm back so yeah I think she's pretty good now with that sort yeah of that's good because I know that's, she loves me yes and so important <laughs> and for you know I, I hear this all of the time from people out there um, you know, the barking and the anxiety, so much anxiety with cats and dogs these days. But animals are telepathic. They, they read mm. the images in your mind. So you want to use the words that create the image of the behaviour that you want from your animals. So when you tell her that you're going to the shop, just let her know, I'll be back in 30 minutes. Or And if you're always late, because come on, people out there, there's people that are, would be late to their own funeral. If you're always late, <laughs> add an hour on. <laughs> because if you've got, especially if you've got an anxious animal, because if you're going to tell them you're going to be back at 12, and really that means two in your lateness, then make it three. And then they can yep. manage that sort of thing. So um, that's yep. great telling her. And she's eye rolling. When you're talking about that, she is eye rolling. So like, I know where you are. She also says that you talk a lot. You don't need to give her so much <laughs> detail as to where you're going and how long you're going to be and what you're doing because she actually I knows. actually do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Over so, it. <laughs> but, but the good thing is, Donna, is that when you're telling her where you're going, that's forcing an image in your mind. So if you say I'm going to work, you've probably got an image of what your work looks like and where it is and what you're going to be doing there. So she's just kind of going, yep, okay, that's familiar. I know where that is. I know where she's going and I know that she will be back. And, you know, if you go overseas, you, you know, show the video of where you're going, airplane, where you're going. And when we talk about when you're coming back, and I know we spoke about this um, when you were away last time with that, that issue, you talk about dark nights. So if you're going away for five dark nights and you can talk to them while you're away and when you're coming back, I'll be back in five dark nights. And then when, when I get back, and I think this is what you were just saying, when I get back, we're going to go to the beach and we're going to play ball and we're going to do all of these things and, and she will see that information uh, of what you're going to mm. do together. So that's great. Mm. You're doing such a good job there. Um is she okay with the small yard? That was one of your questions too. Yeah. Is she out there during the day? Is she, does she have access she outside came, during the day? Yeah. <clears throat> yep, yep. And there's a little garden and there's places to sniff and go to the toilet. And it's just not what we had before. So we lived in the same house where she was brought home to for the first kind of two years of her life. And I moved over here, you know, a year and a half ago. So it was a, a backyard with grass and a garage she could access and down the side of the house she could access. And this house is um, a, a balcony where I'm sitting now upstairs and downstairs has a courtyard um, with no grass. It's just paved. Um, there's a garden and she can have a sniff around in there. But we do go to the park, you know, twice a, twice a day. We go in the morning and then we go to the park in the afternoon or we do the beach. What I'm getting there is that in an ideal world she would have acres um, mm. And because she is a working dog, she does like to move. But she, you know, there's got there's a bit of a compromise here, isn't there? Because she has a great mm. she has a great mum, and you don't. She's not a lap dog. Working dogs are not lap dogs. So you don't come home and sit on the couch and you know, here, Cleo, come and sit with me while she's just got energy to burn. So mm. she's okay with her circumstances at the moment as much as she can get out and run. And even if it means mm. when you're away or super busy that you hire someone to come in and take her mm. for extra walks. So because yep. she could, she could really, she could go for hours. 
Yeah. So two walks a day, uh, that was that was something that you were asking about. Two walks a day yep. minimum, absolute minimum mm -hmm. for her. As she gets older, of course, yep. you know, things will slow down. But I want to say three or four. She could go three or four walks a day and but and extended. But, you know, we have to be pragmatic, don't we, because mm. people work. You've got work to do, you've got yeah. things to do, and you just can't do that. So uh, she, two is great, more is better. So however okay. you figure that, you know, or is it like how long do you take her out for in the morning and night? Well, the morning when she comes running, we run about 5K. Um, so that's a pretty good run. And that's then or if we do the park, yeah, if we do the park, we're down at the park for at least half an hour, sometimes longer. And if there's other dogs there, sometimes I'm there for an hour. So this morning we were down there because I had to come home and catch up with you. We were only there for maybe 20 minutes and I take a ball and she, I just throw the ball and back and forth. She could do that all day, I reckon. Um, so, and the afternoons are sometimes longer because I'll go down at sort of after work or if I've got an early day, I'll go down there at four and we'll stay, you know, throwing a ball. I Sometimes I sit down there, just sit and watch her and throw the ball. So she gets lots of interactions. I do sometimes take her out in the middle of the day too. If I come home in the middle of the day, I'll run her down the park and have a third run. So two is definite every single day. I put her in a doggy daycare for a little mm. while last year. Yep. Hated it, went out of the car. And I just stopped going because I think I tried it for two weeks and she just hated it. I could tell she didn't like it. There's a couple of things that's just come through here. One of them, there was a white fluffy dog at that daycare. Not, not a friend. <laughs> That, that she hates dog. white fluffy dogs. <laughs> Maltese Shih Tzus can't stand them, and it's yeah. weird because my kids don't like them either. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, they they poisoned him. Maybe mind. she's picking up um, on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was, and I was going to say Maltese, so we're on the same path. But she's there was a white <laughs> fluffy Maltese, let's say, uh, at daycare, and that's just like, why are you leaving me here with that? I do not mm -hmm. like that dog. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, little white dog. I'm sure you are absolutely beautiful like all other dogs, uh, but not, not Cleo's friend. She's not uh, a fan. Thing, She's not a fan. <laughs> no, that's funny. The other thing, uh, Donna, is I was just um, getting told here to ask you for a reason. When you take her to the beach, do you take the ball with you? Yes, pretty much every single time because, and if I don't, there is a ball holder at the beach that I go to and there's usually a, ball, a spare ball in there. But if we don't go with a ball, game over. She's like, see ya, not interested. Yeah. I want to go home now. So yeah. we always do, yeah. I want to say with that, the reason behind that question was um, I'm getting shown here that be very mindful of the amount of sand that she's ingesting while she's okay. grabbing the ball on the sand because that can cause all sorts of pretty serious issues into the digestive system because okay. they're eating the sand. And that's not, I guess that's not with all dogs because I don't see that often, but I'm just getting shown with um, Cleo mm. that because mm. she, uh, what I see is her kind of running and kind of charging into the ball, that that's a mouthful of sand going in. So be really, mm -hmm. and for anyone else that is taking their dogs to the beach and throwing balls around, just be really, really conscious of that because it can be a real problem. She does do that a lot, actually, now that I think about it. She's covered in sand on her face. Just be mindful of that. And while I'm talking about it, I'm just getting shown Frisbee. So I don't know whether Frisbee is an option um, for her to, yeah. to try and kind of, you know, break her habit of having a addiction to chasing balls on the beach the last question that you had was why does she bark at um, trucks and skateboards motorized skateboards and buses and things can't stand the sound there is i'm getting st taken straight to her ears there's an element of um warning you it's protection mm -hmm. but it's like a little mum be careful don't walk in front of a bus mm -hmm. Or you know mm -hmm. the skateboard or whatever it is. So there's a, an element of her mm -hmm. trying to tell you something, but also I'm just getting feeling into her ears, and it's just it's a bit like fingernails on a blackboard. So the sound is ah. not really good for her. As we were talking about before, because this comes up very very often, barking dogs. When we are telling a dog not to bark, because we're we're born saying negative things like don't stop, no can't all of that sort of stuff so we want to take that out of our language when we talk to animals 
what we want to say is be quiet because when we say stop barking, don't bark, we're showing an image in our mind, we're creating an image of a barking dog. The no and the don't and stop, you know, that, that doesn't matter so much to the dog. It's more about what it's creating in our own video screen. Mm -hmm. And then the dog mm -hmm. clearly reads that and goes, well, mum's just okayed me for barking, so I'll keep doing that. What you want to do is change the language. So you want to create words, doesn't matter what they are, what can I say that will just have a dog with its mouth shut in my mind? You know, it's not quite as simple as all of that. You've got to practice. You've got to be committed to it. Everyone in the house needs to be on the same page. But be quiet is something I use or shush. Uh, works really mm -hmm. well for, for our dog, especially when he starts howling at ambulances. And I know that for him, he's a border Kelpie, and I know he has issues with the sound with that. So he's kind of yeah. trying to manage that. But when he when he goes off on his little barking tangents, be quiet will kind of snap him out of it. Um, yeah, okay. He's able to see. So just keep that in mind with Cleo. If you're trying to get her to stop barking, yep. be quiet. Find a word yep. that works or a little sentence or whatever mm -hmm. and just go with that. It's a really good tip. I hadn't thought about it quite like that before, but, yeah, the imagery is so important because otherwise, you know, they just see what you're saying. And if you're saying don't bark and the bark is the word they say, they're like, yeah, doing it. <laughs> it's great. I'm allowed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, no, that's great. I'll try that. Yeah, she's actually calmed down a lot with that just when I had the dog trainer out here. He was saying, yeah, he actually did something really cool, which I thought was very clever, was put a, a little boom box out here on the balcony, actually, and he played from YouTube some motorbike sounds. And then we watched her with her ears like light up and go to bark. And then he called her in and he, he gave her the treat when she was quiet and then when she went to do it again, he pulled her back and, yeah, we just keep doing that. But it doesn't always work. I mean, sometimes she's barking and I think, what's going on? You know, and all. But I think the language is really good because that's what I say to her. I say, don't bark, stop barking, stop barking. Mm. So, mm. yeah, yeah, she's probably just seeing the word bark and going, yeah, cool. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we all do it. That's that's kind of how we 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 grow up that way. So it's just a case mm. of of changing it over a little bit and dog trainers are fantastic you know it's like it's an add-on the the language is just yeah. an add-on to what they can show and offer you and and sometimes sometimes we just get to a point where, where we just have to manage what we've got in an yeah. animal because they're like humans you know if they yeah. don't want to do something yeah. they won't do it they have their own unique personalities so um yeah work with your dog trainer change your language and do all of those things and i, I know you're doing the absolute um, best you can for her. She's really lucky to have you as a mum. And mm -hmm. I'm so mm -hmm. thankful to have you and Cleo. She's disappeared. She's just like, yeah, that's a bit boring now. I'm off. Um, but thank Sitting you so much for joining Cold me tonight. <laughs> oh, you're so uh, welcome. It's great to see you and talk to you as well. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah. You've, you've been so great to help with um, lots of little things with her. You know, she's she's a really smart dog and a bit too smart for her own good sometimes. And and despite that, though, I sometimes I don't understand what's going on with her. So it's been really very helpful having you as um, someone that can help me understand, you know, giving her a really good life. And, and um, she's a great dog. I just love her as well. That's a, a mutual feeling. And, and this is the thing with animal communication is that it can really help you when you don't know what what your animal is needing or what they're thinking or how they feel about something, that you can actually... Uh, talk to someone that can be the conduit between you and, and your animal and to help get that information. So then you know you know what you're dealing with and you know what to do next and, yeah, and go from helpful. there. Yeah, so thank you very much, Donna. Thank you, Cleo. Goodbye to Cleo, wherever Thanks, you are. Ron. Make your day richer with The Richard Wilmore Show. Meet amazing musicians, talented actors, brilliant authors, hilarious comedians, and the most creative people in entertainment. Download the KP Media TV app to watch on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. That's the show for tonight, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here tonight joining me. Now, don't forget, subscribe to that YouTube channel because I've got some fantastic guests coming up and you do not want to miss a single one of them. Thanks for watching, everyone. Sharing animal matters because animals absolutely matter.